Is It Transphobic? will be addressing issues of transphobia and transmisogyny. We may also address issues of racism, classism, ableism, and various other intersectional issues in this podcast. So this is a trigger warning. The panelists on Is It Transphobic? will also use strong language. So listener discretion is advised. Hey everyone, my name is Ashley Lauren Rogers. I use she, her, and they, them pronouns. I am the host and creator of the Is It Transphobic podcast, and today I'm being joined by... Paola Gonzalez. I use uh, she, her pronouns, and um, this is my second, third time in the show, so yeah, looking forward to it. Hello, I'm Mia Byrne. I use she, her pronouns as well. Yay! So the piece that we're going to be talking about today... Uh, I actually didn't hear about it until I started Googling around for things to look at, and it was put on a number of different lists, some of them showing good trans representation, some of them showing bad trans representation. So I really wanted to kind of get into it and how we felt about it. Uh, The piece is called Boy Meets Girl, and... Unfortunately, it is generic enough that there are a number of pieces of media that are named this particular name. <laughs> there's a, there's uh, lots of more clothing lines. Is there? Oh yeah. <laughs> how how is there is how is the clothing line? I think it's uh, I think it's a uh, you know uh, like boyfriend jeans kind of thing. <laughs> oh my god! Fantastic! I love it! I love it! You know what? I just unapologetically love it. purposeful. It's a purposeful young. <laughs> Contemporary label. <laughs> oh, what was the other one? I think there's a band named Boy Meets Girl. Also, that was the other thing I found in my research. There's a there's a TV series too. Like, is okay. there is there a TV series? Yeah, I know there's, there's a TV World, series. Like, <laughs> yeah, Boy Meets Girl. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. yeah so, just to 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 narrow it down, we're talking about it was a film made in I believe it was released in either 2014 or 2015. Uh, 2015. 2014. 2015. Oh, <laughs> already we got an argument. I love it. Okay. No, uh, but yes. So it's one of those years, uh, and it was uh, it was it premiered at the Frameline Film Festival uh, in San Francisco where I live, um, okay. and then it went into distribution uh, in uh, in 2015. Ah, okay. okay. Okay, so it was like, all right, so that makes sense, you know. Um, yeah. Cool. I, okay. I, I I saw it in 2015, so um, I did as well. Oh, okay. I because my first question was going to be, have you seen this before? Uh, what like, if you can remember what you thought of it at the time? Do you like, what were your feelings watching it at the time? Paola, do you want to go first? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, sure. I can't um, I, I didn't know what to expect, you know, because like it's really like when it when it's uh, time for trans movies, like there hasn't been that many movies that that that, that I have seen that have uh, a decent representation of trans women. So I was I had my concerns. I was kind of skeptical, and um, I I think because it was in an environment where there was uh, a lot of people, so. I, I think I there were certain things that I didn't understand at the time, uh, or I I didn't remember well until I saw it again, and I'm like, oh, that that actually happens. But 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 it was still kind of like I could relate with some things, but there were some things that I was like, oh, that is so too ideal, like this that is not real life, like at all. Um, For those of you listening, uh, Ashley and I are nodding along. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it was still good. I still enjoyed the movie, you know. Like, and uh, but watching it a second time, then I'm I'm kind of like, okay, this is this is a little bit uh, more different. There are certain issues that I have, but there are certain issues that I'm like, you know, this is actually not that bad, but it could be better. It could it could be made a little bit different. Yeah, I definitely hear that. Uh, Mia, how about you? How did you? Uh feel about it in 2015 (laughs) um so i have i have to if if you know me you know that i i anecdote on almost everything um so i first heard of this film 
because I came out publicly in 2014. And at the time, one of my friends, Paul Tabachnik, who's a singer songwriter, reached out to me um, in support and was also telling me that he had been, he's, he, he was super proud of me, all this stuff, but also that he'd been working on this film with uh, this guy, Eric Schaefer, who's the director of the film, um, about a trans woman in the rural South. And he was doing the end credit uh, song. I was like, well, that's really cool. Uh, keep me posted. And so he did. So I had this personal connection to the film. So I went in it with this, and I feel like I recall not not personally being involved in like the promotion or anything like that, but but that somebody had asked me something about, you know, how do I, you know, at the time I had been being asked a lot of things about stuff. I'm like, hey, maybe say this, maybe say that. Mm. So I went into the film not really expecting much. Uh, and I was actually pleasantly surprised because I, I agree with everything Paula said. I, I think that the film did a lot of things well. I think it could have done a lot of things better. There were some definitely cringeworthy moments. My understanding is that this film, come to a certain extent, it comes out of, I think it comes out of a, out of a true story or some, something that Eric Schaefer had been passionate about. Um, and I, and this is one of those rare cases of a film where I believe that the intention really was very good and then the way it was filmed was somewhat true to, um, to I, I think, trans life at the time. And it certainly gave us one, Michelle Henley, who's you know such a great actor, who was the first, one of the first trans women to play a trans woman in a film starring a trans woman. <laughs> yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a it's a big deal. Yeah, um, it is. Yeah. That that that, mm. that of the, being the first trans woman to be in a in a film in a film like there are not many movies like that. The other movie that has a trans actor as the lead is a uh, uh, a magic um, a magic woman, yeah, uh, which is a movie from uh, mm. Peru and, uh, with Daniela Vega, yeah, yeah. So yeah, and this movie came out I think a couple of years before that, but you're absolutely yes. right. Yeah. So so when Hollywood says like. Oh, we cannot have trans women in lead roles. They don't know what they're talking. Right. I mean, like, yeah. come on. Yeah. <laughs> Eve Lindley, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know why I keep saying that. Michelle Henley yeah. played the crap out of that role. And yes. <laughs> and that's the thing is that the character was very believable. And I could absolutely relate to what she was going through, especially for me in early transition and living in New York. Mm -hmm. At the same time, being, you know, an anarcho-political activist, there are those, there are a few lines in the movie where I'm just like, no, don't say that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the film, it's like, it's about a trans lesbian, which is so cool, right? It depends. I think in the movie, they have the discussion like, uh, oh, well, so where do, where do we fit in here, you know? Right. And I'm right. like, oh, gosh. Um <laughs> Yeah, that, that was definitely one of the cringier conversations, as I remember, uh, immediately. Yeah. Like, So I watched this uh, last night, and I, I'm going to say I watched it last night with my wife, even though uh, she kind of jumped in halfway through, and she was like, wait, what is this? So we're, we're watching, and for me, like, the, the whole thing, I, I just immediately dug the chemistry, particularly between uh, Ricky, the, the main character, and I can't remember her name, uh, the... the Rob. Say again. Probably. Probably. Rob. Well, well, that's the thing. I actually like, and this is a thing that the, the movie has gotten criticism about is like, I do think that they have good friendly chemistry, but I did not see what everyone was saying. The only reason I saw them getting together later was because everybody kept going, oh, that, that boy, that boy likes you. And it's just like, that boy likes uh, you. That boy likes you. Yeah. I, Does he? He, <laughs> he? he didn't have that vibe for me. Like the whole movie, I was like, yeah. "Why well, they keep saying that that boy has something for her?" When uh, <laughs> he didn't seem at all that he was like that. He seemed like the nice, like <sighs> the nice friend, you know. And out of a sudden, he's out of the friend zone. But like, you know, it, I didn't saw that Which, at all. He, there, there's a whole other discussion about this like friend zone idea. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know exactly yeah. where, what you're trying to get at there. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. Um, but yeah, with Francesca, that is her name. Like 
their chemistry was just like immediate. I was like, even though it was a very awkward conversation that's being hap that's happening, I was just like, oh, I see this. They're they something is going to go on between the two of them. Right. And I was here for it. <laughs> like, what the way I kind of have been describing because I've been trying to figure out a way to put into words. Because whenever they talk about trans issues, trans things, things that have to do with trans stuff, whether it is in a negative way or it is in a positive kind of taking it back and making a joke way, it is done with the sensitivity of a sledgehammer. And I think that's what leads to the cringiness. But at the same time, I, I, it didn't not work. Like, sometimes it was more effective than others, and oftentimes I did find myself kind of, like, pulled out because of it, but at the same time, that sensitivity of a sledgehammer was still kind of like, oh, okay, uh, all right, you're just going right in for this. That's intriguing. <laughs> <laughs> it, I feel like they, like, in the movie, the dialogue in the movie, they just pretty much took a, a France 101 Q&A and then just, like, inserted it in there in the movie, you know? Yeah. They just mm -hmm. decided, all right, so you're going to have this line about this, you're going to mm -hmm. have this other line about this, and then you guys mm -hmm. are going to have this other line about this. And and I'm, like, being the second watch that I watched, I was like, huh. Like, <laughs> and then when I compared it to other to other media out there, because there's other media that we can compare it with, like, for example, when you take... Uh, uh, I mean, Supergirl is a different case scenario, but like when you take Supergirl and you have a trans character in there, you don't get that uh, trans 101 all the time in the series, you know? Mm -hmm. Then when you look at the, the movie A Fantastic Woman, you also don't have that many moments like that. So it feels like this movie was very trans 101 Q&A inserted into a dialogue just to try to make people understand what's going on right and i just feel that that took off a little bit from the storyline that was going on i agree with you and i it's it's really hard to accept the fact that even and people have asked me about this because i came out again in 2014 they're like i'm like there this is a completely different world that we're living in right now and at the same time things aren't that different i had to correct a friend the other day and just be like hey don't use my friend's old name even though you knew them beforehand kind of thing and i i think the intention of the filmmaker was to make a seemingly innocent love story with a twist mm. um <laughs> it's funny because i was scrolling through facebook muck last night and you know, I, I watch these clips of films sometimes uh, when I'm going to sleep, and one was that awful scene in The Naked Gun that lampoons. Oh, um, oh, oh, you know, and I'm just oh, like, oh. Oh. and and I've also been watching some other seminal films from the '90s, like Philadelphia. And what's really fascinating to me is how far we actually have come. Mm like going up to 2014 whereas you remember that is the year of transgender tipping point that's the year that mm -hmm. a lot of us in the trans community kind of took down um kate pearson's mr sister song and there there was a lot of activism going on and we stopped the michigan women's festival and all of yeah. the other stuff that happened that particular year so to me that film coming out that year had a lot of cultural relevance that said when i watched it it was just like oh, can't you this is good but god why can't you <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. i don't know why i expected it to be so much better maybe because i had a personal connection to it maybe because i knew that these people who were involved in it had good hearts mm. and at the same time it's leaps and bounds better than a lot of things that have come since then like fucking i'm sorry then um yeah, you can swear on then, this podcast that's fine <laughs> then the danish girl for god's sake <laughs> i mean uh, i didn't talk, i haven't seen that movie i so will I not i will not see it but you know the advertisements for it on netflix right now are eddie redman <sighs> holding a dress and like looking like he's just seen god and i'm just like i'm like oh for for, for Pete's sake, we, we, oh my, that's the greatest thing about this film, I think, is that this presents this person as a person and not as an object. I agree. And yeah, and yes, the, the, the sex parts of it are not 
done super great. And then it goes to this whole thing at the end where, you know, she winds up with the boy and blah, 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 blah. And, and there are some things that are, that, that take a little bit of leap of imagination because yeah. uh, there's a, there's a, there's a great article on them from last year or the year before that talks about, it's like, how, how in God's name is this person an influencer on YouTube and doesn't know any tra other trans women? I think I came across that article last night and I was putting a little bit about that. And yes, that's why one of the things, I mean, like concerned that the, the film set in 2015, you have a lot of access to social media. This person feeling like she's the only one, all that kind of stuff, kind of like doesn't make any sense whatsoever, no. you know? Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, like, well, I feel like one of the issues with some of the characters, like they just fall into cliches of like, um, yes. st st mm -hmm. typical stereotypes that of uh, of that kind. And the one thing that I know that like, um, I don't know if uh, you guys know it, but like the name of the character, um, it's not very, it's not a very feminine name. It's a very gender neutral name. Mm -hmm. And I have to wonder like why they did that. I mean, although it's so, it's understandable that there were some scenes that had a, a young a younger self in the movie. I, I feel like it was probably done because of that. So we really don't have to deal with a dead name issue. Well, and I'm, I'm also going to throw out, and this is just me projecting. It seemed like as much as uh, later we find out that the entire family might not have been on board, she still grew up in a very supportive household with her father. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and because of that, because like I imagine it might have been actually a lot easier for her to, even if it's adapt her dead name, to be something more ambiguous or uh, more feminine. Mm -hmm. uh, like it, it feels like, as opposed to like, because I have met a lot of trans folk that do adapt their dead name to be to reflect more of who they are now partially because they have had a good home with their family uh and that's not always the case and there are a lot of people that that's the opposite is true both they've still changed their name to something completely different or they've kept a changed version of their dead name even though they don't care for their family uh, and their family doesn't they don't get along with them but I don't know, like it, it just in my head, that's why it tracked, if that makes any sense. It, it, it does. And also, like when you mentioned about the, the, the modifying the name in a, in a way that is like that, my previous name started with a P. So I just decided to keep my initials. Yeah. Just to make it easier on my family, you know, because like one of the things, like uh, when I first came out, like how my, how should I allow my parents to, to address me? So, I decided to, I told him, hey, can you use my initials if you don't feel like using my, my name? So I started using my my middle, my middle first name initial and my middle initial. I kept my family name uh, as it is because that's a family name. So, mm. um, but they were using my initials. And when I changed my name legally, I just decided to keep the initials in my name somehow. So like what you, what you say, it's totally true, you know? So like if that, if that was the case, that probably, that, that that will make sense in the mo in terms of the movie, but the movie doesn't explain too much of that, and um, they you you know you're you just delve into the life of this person and they just but you know that oh yeah that was my dad and my dad is a mechanic you know and all that kind of stuff, which is surprising. Like I'm surprised that that usually when a person transition or at least my experience has been like most of the time is the masculine figure that goes away. In here we sa we see the total opposite, you know, like um, the mother going away, not the dad. Which to me was kind of like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, like in in a lot of media and in a lot of like cultural understanding, people immediately assume that uh, the like the the woman in the family will be a lot more understanding and a lot more accepting. And it's not always the case. Sometimes mm -hmm. uh, it will be a paternal figure or a male figure that is a lot more understanding. And it, it was nice to kind of see that represented as like. Oh, the father the father stuck by his daughter that's that's really cool yeah i i like, thought that as well i and i think that's that's the thing about this movie is that it does blow up a, a bunch of tropes even when it's being tropey yeah which is mm -hmm. one of the reasons why i was like i want to talk about this movie because it's <laughs> such it's such an enigma um and and in my own life it's i've had i've had similar experiences with 
with with certain people and i i certainly know it seems i i also like the the fact that this movie represents queerness in the south mm. because mm -hmm. there is there's a huge problem that i think those of us who live in um bigger cities maybe don't understand that there can be and there is a lot of queerness in the south in rural areas and that it's unfair for those of us in big cities even though the plot of the film is i want to go to the big city the plot is so that she can go to fashion school which yeah. is cool so that she can go to parsons um so but and i see this you know we saw this in the backlash of the taylor swift video that came out not too long ago but when you it depicts rural people as understanding and cool and for the most part just like oh yeah hey ricky you know yep that's ricky mm. you know she's ricky boom and that's that's not an uncommon thing and it's more common than people think and i'm not saying everybody should run away to rural rural missouri or kentucky um but it, it is a thing that happens and it's it's interesting that that's represented within the context of this film mm -hmm. and it's also michelle's actual story she she and that's how eric schaefer found her which is I, what I find really interesting is, is right now, I and mean, Ashley, as, as we both know, there are a lot, there are many people who are actively casting trans people uh, and certainly casting companies that are very much all about trans people. In 2014, that really didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so you had a few, you had, you had Laverne Cox, you had Kate Bornstein and a handful of other people who were high profile enough to be cast as trans in anything. Eric literally was like, I can't find a trans person and I need to I need to cast a trans person in this role. What am I gonna do? And found Michelle's own blog and mm -hmm. cast her from that, which which is a very cool thing. And again, I'm not saying this to just defend the film would say, oh Eric Schaefer is some like big, you know, mighty <laughs> mighty wonderful blah 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 um, but it did it made a big ripple effect because that kind of casting hadn't happened yeah so and just for context for listeners also we just today i just recorded i have no idea when i'm going to release it but uh today i also recorded an episode on dallas buyers club uh which famously oh. cast jared leto as a character that they initially created as a drag queen, but then changed to trans, and then everything got confusing. Uh, but that came out in 2013. So this was a year, two years prior to this coming out. Um, yeah, wait, was Dallas Buyers Club 2013? Yeah. Yep. Wow, I didn't realize it was that early. I thought yeah. it was later than that. Actually, that was, uh, that was something that one of our commentators said, too. They were like, wait, I forgot that it was then. I thought it was like, like, one thought that it was like, wait, I thought this was the early aughts that this came out. Another one was like, I thought this was like maybe two years ago. It was just like, yeah, no, 2013. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I kind of like, I, I kind of, I'm also sad my channel of thought in, in here, but like, yeah, like I, I, I got to see Dallas, uh, uh, Dallas Cup, wait, Dallas Cup, Cowboy Club, but uh, Dallas, Dallas Buyers, Buyers Club. Club. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The they, Dallas Cowboys Buyers Club. Oh I yeah, yeah. Buy, I will uh, buy myself a Dallas Cowboys any day. I, uh, I am so sorry. No, I love I love this. Go go but, go for it, Paula. But, <laughs> but yeah, I, I I saw a movie and and like again like just because uh, that, that I don't feel like a connection with that movie similar to the connection that I feel with some a little bit of the of the. Was a character in 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 this movie in Boy Meets Girl, you know, like so so that was a huge improvement because like coming from seeing Dallas Boys Club, I was like, oh, this is just like stereotypical like trans character, like it's it, it I, I, and you know like let's put it this way, like to me as a Latina woman, like it's difficult to find characters that I feel kind of relatable in the first place, you know, um, but in uh, with Boy Meets Girl, like the character of Freaky, like. I could relate in certain ways, you know, 
I also like the fact that they didn't make her like overly super, super ultra femme, pretty much, you know? Even though she was a fashion designer, she, she, she did have moments like, like when she was working in the cafe, you know, she was just like, yeah, just working in the cafe, I'm wearing fat flannel, you know, like, it's like, she's very down to earth, so, you know, like, she's not like one of, um, a, a character designed for, specifically for film completely, that it's like, oh no, let, let's make sure that it's like completely, totally, complete, as feminine as possible, you know, it wasn't like that, so that was one of the things that I kind of like, like about the movie, and, uh, and the character. I agree with you there. Um, you know, there's, there's just so, there's still so much stereotyping in, in representation of trans people in any, in any way, shape or form. You know? And so for me, it's, it's interesting to look back at this film, which is you know, six or seven years old and, and have that same feeling. And I think it's still streaming on Netflix. Um, I'm not sure. I don't. I, I don't think so because I tried to search it and I didn't see it on Netflix. I ended up going to Amazon and just renting the movie in Amazon. Okay. It's on Amazon. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's it's on Amazon. Amazon is evil. We all know this. At the same time, it's like, yeah, okay. Here, here it is now. <laughs> like, it's so funny because like, there's also this. I don't want to use the word crass because I feel like that has very negative connotations. But there's a, a very like upfront ness that could come off as crass to some people in the like the the way that they uh talked and just like specifically the like okay so if you've got like talk to me about sex talk to me about like is it when she start when ricky starts asking uh robbie about like what is it like to have sex penis and vagina and it's like ah i don't want to like no 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 just just stay with me on this so is it like, it's just like i love that so much because it is that like awkward like like because you'd think if he really thought of her as one of the guys it might still be an awkward conversation but especially in a piece of media it would be like all right well let's talk about this let's get into the details yeah but like because he's talking to his good friend who is who he who he knows is a woman it's like ah oh, this is weird i don't want to talk about this with you what uh what no i don't want to talk about like uh. <laughs> that was a good scene actually you know like yeah uh, uh, it was uh, it was interesting but it was it was a good scene but at the same time it's like i kind of feel like um i mean based on my own experiences you know like like, like yeah i can understand how Ricky may have felt at that point in the movie you know Especially if you are being only dating like boys, you know, because mm -hmm. that, that that was the other thing. Like in the movie, she decides like, and I don't know if I like it too much in that sense. It's like she says like, oh, maybe I should get a girlfriend. That's how she said she wanted to date uh, Francesca pretty much. But like at the same time, it's like, do all trans women have to be presented that they date only men? Like, can, can, can we change that in movies? Because that doesn't that 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 takes a lot of like of the diversity in the trans community. That's that's my opinion. You know, I'll be a complete woman when a man comes and sweeps me away. <laughs> I mean, but that's a trope. That's a trope throughout film. I mean, it it's is. Not, and like the other night, I was I I stayed up till four in the morning watching the last season of Shira, and I. Which we could have a whole nother podcast about, but the okay. the normalization of queerness in media right now as just like oh that's his that's his husband that's her wife that's her partner that's their partner they are in a polycule all of these things are like they're starting to change, but I think you're right and I think one of the things is I mean I think Michelle is straight. I don't think it's, I think that the, the little, the, the existential crisis that she's having is not out of the realm for a lot of straight um, trans women. And I know a lot of straight trans women. I don't understand them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no shade. I love all of you. You know who you are. You're wonderful. Um, I, I just don't understand. I'm, I'm pansexual. So yeah, like I, but I, I have, been, uh, I used to have a boyfriend at one point, you know, and, and, and honestly, like, when I find my boyfriend, I feel like watching the movie now, 
having a trial relationship with a guy, like, you know what, this is so like, like, like now I feel like more, more identified with the character, which is, <laughs> which is quite interesting. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's interesting. And knowing that I have only like, um, I mean, I, 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 Probably date a woman like uh, when she's having that moment. Like I'm like, yeah, yeah, I can totally understand that. You know, yeah, that that that, that makes perfect sense. You know, you're the, like so so yeah. So like that that, that that's like that scene for me was like interesting to see, but at the same time it's like, huh, that's that that's something I can understand. You know. Um, right. And and I will say that the uh, the piece actually in a couple of reviews that I've looked at, um, they've blasted that idea as being unrealistic. That like she's never had a question about her sexuality before, and now suddenly she does. And it's just like I don't know. Like I'm just gonna go bold and say yes, you can know for certain what your sexuality is at any point in time. But at the same time, A, it's healthy to, it's healthy to question. And B, right. like, that can happen at any time. It's not just like, you're like, oh, I'm trans. And also this, I know everything about myself. And I think that's a dangerous stereotype too, is yeah. that you yeah. have to know everything immediately if you are coming out. Um, and, I mean, for, for yeah. me, when I came out, like, I, I, I didn't... I wasn't sure, and at one point, like before I even transition, like I have somebody um, questioning me um, about my sexuality, and and honestly, I don't think I wasn't completely sure back then, and it took mm -hmm. like a long time, like to finally, oh, okay, now I think I'm sure of what I am, but at the same time, it, it was kind of like, um, I, I don't want to use the word exploring because, but I can't think of another word. Like it was trying to figure things out, you know, you have to put yourself out there, you know, and, but now I'm sure of what I am about my, my uh, how I identify, but like before, I, I, I think that saying for sure that a person can say completely what they are, I don't think it's possible, I think, I think it, it's, it takes more, not only experience, but also a lot of like introspection, uh, yeah. Uh, Introspection. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I can't even pronounce that. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. The the other thing, like, so I'm I'm I was very here, especially because I just saw that chemistry immediately between the two of them, between Francesca and Ricky. I was like, yes, please, please, you two. And then it's like, okay, the story <laughs> is setting up that it's going to be like, and I didn't know that was where this was going to go. I thought this was going to be like the standard like oh you really like that boy don't you oh you know whatever he really likes you oh whatever and then like it was going to be that i didn't realize there was going to be this whole francesca plot and i was just like oh i'm here for this yes mm -hmm. but the, the one person we haven't talked about is francesca's fiance dave david appleby david. Yeah, with david the amazing appleby. last name <laughs> that was lazy writing in there, David Appleby. Because mm -hmm. when you think about Appleby, you think about this amazing horse star and that family go, you know. <laughs> like they're really angling. They really wanted to call Ricky TGI Friday, but they just didn't think they could get away with it. Uh, <laughs> that one was Jones, which is a very common name, yeah. you know. Um, so, but uh, David. Um, and again, when I talk about this idea of like the sledgehammer, wow, like the first thing we hear from him is just like a screed of transphobic bullshit. And it's just like, oh yeah, that Whoa. was very cringy. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Like, like, ooh. And by the end, just to say, like, we, I always let people know we're going to spoil it. We have to be able to spoil it in order to talk about it. Uh, by the end... Spoilers, so... <laughs> I'm not going to say that he's a sympathetic character, because they don't really give him enough to be sympathetic. But man, like, there is definitely a, an intriguing 180 on David yep. that happens. And, and I, I think I have forgotten about this, because when I was watching the movie, and I, we get to the part where... Where she's at the one percent party in the house of the of uh, Francesca, you know, because mm -hmm. um, the 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 scene is also it, it was also interesting this um, the showcase of the character of Ricky because Ricky came from a poor family, mm -hmm. which which is interesting, um, and then you had the Francesca being 
a member of the one percent, you know. Um, mm. in, in in the movie, her family had money, big mansion. They they, they were into politics, you know, and and that scene after David out of a sudden. It's like, oh yeah, and I move my uh, my contacts on that kind of stuff, and David is here, and David appears, and then all the hatred that spew from that. I had to stop the movie because I was like, my gosh, I just just want to like punch him, you know, because like he was saying so many negative things about about Ricky, and I'm like, oof, this was uh, it was a little bit rough to watch that 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 part for me, honestly. And uh, the sad part is like I have read comments like that from people i have uh your comments like that from people so it's uh it's it's something that i have to deal with my life too so but what what really fascinated me about it was especially as he's getting heated about it he's like amping up when he's finally physically there in that in that party and he the father francesca's father like they're trying to like the two of them, Francesca and David, are like going back and forth on like, no, well, you tell him. It's like, I th there is nothing wrong with just like doing this back and forth. And finally, the uh, Francesca's father grabs David and says something. I wrote it down. Let me see if I can find it because I it like stuck with me as a very surprising, especially as someone who grew up in the in New England and in New York, like as a thing that I did not expect from this piece but it was uh essentially oh man i took so many notes uh <laughs> i don't uh, think i took note of that of, of the dialogue but i i know the scene because it was like the like so it surprised me that francesca's father had the you know he decided to interfere because david was like oh, i'm going to go there and like make their life miserable and, and the dad just like nope you are staying here kid i'm yeah. like yeah, no, I guess I didn't write it down, but it was something to the degree of like, listen, my daughter can hang out with whoever she wants and you will respect that. It was just like, good. Oh, right. Yeah. It, it it was a strong moment for that character. And I was like, I was surprised that they, that they did a scene that way. And I, and I was happy to see that because it's like, mm -hmm. yeah. Like, even though the character of, the, of that character, like uh, pretty much like, you know, if, if we're going to put it in context, he was probably a GOP representative, you know, because that's what he was. Well, they, they talked about him, like, being okay with, or, like, or specifically, like, having tea with Bill O'Reilly or something. <laughs> 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 it's just like, yep, okay, we know they're doing a really good job of building up who these characters are so that when they do make a, so yeah. that they do make choices that are against what you immediately think, it really resonates. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the, so the question, I mean, like, the, so the question is, is it transphobic? <laughs> <laughs> so we'll we'll get there. We we build. We're building. We're building. Well, we're so building it up. What he said. We're building it up. What David said. Um, absolutely. But yes. But go on. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing too. Is that again the undercurrent of this whole thing is that the is that the town the parents. There's so much support for these characters um, with who they are. And that's something that I think a lot of us wish for. Um, there's certainly so many folks who don't have that kind of support. And something I've seen in, I, I think some of the best received queer media like Philadelphia is what some people might call an unrealistic view of parental support and things like that. So for instance, not to divert into Philadelphia, but so in 1993, you have a film about a person who has AIDS and is dying and has the full support of his family, a large white family um, and in, in Philadelphia and obviously, and they just want him to live and to live his truth, which at the time and in the context and watching that film again, it's completely, it's really hard to watch it because there's so much, just, I had forgotten how much homophobia there there was when I was, when I was a child. Um, the point, is, when I, when I was watching it, I was crying because I was wishing, and I'm sure this was part of the intent for Jonathan Demme, who of course has done some awful things for, for, for queer representation too. Um, but, but part of the thing is, is that 
with both of these films, you have this sense that they're speaking not only to parents and loved ones to say, why are you throwing your children away? Because let's make no mistake, that's what a lot of people do to us. Um, no matter who we are or what background we're from, when you come out as trans, when you come out as queer, even right now, it's, it, I feel very good for, for people who have not had the experience that many people in my age bracket have had of, of complete and abject rejection. Um, so for me, when I see a film like this, I applaud that because it, sh it, it gives it, it gives the viewer hope, even within the context, okay, we can be all political and be like, ah, blah, 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 blah. But the the truth of the matter is, is that even though I'm like, whatever, rad you know, I would be painted as ra a radical leftist and I want to break down all these borders and like change everything and abolish gender norms and all this stuff. The truth is, is that a lot of people do live in a binary world and a lot of people do want the kind of recognition that and the kind of love that Ricky is looking for in this movie and a lot of people who are women don't get the kind of parental support that and either of these female characters do in this movie and so for a viewer watching this film in 2014 who maybe isn't like an anarcho trans lesbian, but is trans and is trying to find something to identify with. I would assume, and I would, I would hope that this film speaks to them in that way to say, Hey, there are people who love you. There are people who will support you. Maybe there's a place you can go where you can find that. And, or maybe it's okay for you to come out and maybe bad things won't happen, which is a distinct possibility. Hmm. rant over no good rant i liked i liked that rant uh i want to i want to finish up with david so that we can kind of move in because we need to start yeah. wrapping up um david basically like so ricky is waiting to hear back from this fashion institute in new york uh and as she's about to look at whether she got accepted or denied uh david who finds out that because essentially David is so angry because he finds out that Francesca and Ricky may have had some sort of physical relationship. So he just shows the fuck up at her house, knocks tackles her, to the ground. tackles her to the ground, makes a lot of threats. And that's the thing, like immediately there are a lot of viewers that might immediately want to walk away from this. And I will understand and at least like no trigger that this is going to happen. Uh, but it's diffused by Ricky essentially making a joke about how uh, how David used to prefer to be a bottom as opposed to being on top. And <laughs> yep. I kinda, yep. like, and immediately you think, oh, she's going to get punched. And he just stops and they have a real frank conversation. And it's just like, oh, shit, because they've been building up that, like, oh, you know, like, she had slept with someone before, but not really a lot of people, just, like, one person. Uh, and there's, like, a whole lot of things that lead up to this that I did not, I am so surprised I did not see that twist. I didn't see it coming either. That, 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 that was an interesting twist in the whole movie, because, like, wow. <laughs> looking at the character of David, like, uh, th they heard him, like, again, he was a stereotype, but he was a closeted stereotype that, mm -hmm. and and he was angry and like the movie you you feel like at one point or another i feel like that's going to end up in violence and yeah we have that moment there when he when david tackles her but then out of a sudden that twist that was like oh oh okay <laughs> i didn't expect that yeah and I, but at the same time i didn't like the fact that oh so she may have had a fling with him and then she now has a fling with um her girlfriend and, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and and now it's like when we go to the end of the movie we're, we're, the, the, then they're both sitting down and they're like well <laughs> this just happened with this person mm -hmm. uh, what can we do about it you know i i don't know like i didn't like that let's take some time 
I love that so much that that is what they decided is like, hey, we're not canceling, but we're going to postpone because we as an audience don't think David has earned it yet. Like he, we right. not, yeah. we've only, yeah. he's only yeah. been like here the entire time and he's kind of just been brought down to here. But this idea of like, hey, let's take some time. Let's, we're, we're not now, let's get to know each other better as people. I, I accept that. That's, that's good. Like, and then right. like, he's all smiley and it's like, okay. <laughs> well played movie. Well played. Like, yep. And that movie has he did some stuff right. Yeah. He did. Like he did. The, the way I see this movie, and I hope that it is not an insult to the filmmakers and the people that created it, but I kind of turned to Diana at some point around now and I just said to her, I was like, I get why cishet people like Hallmark movies so much. <laughs> <laughs> because there's something like that today. there's something like yeah. over the top and cheesy about like the humor and a lot of the dialogue, but at the same time there's like real like there's real chemistry between these people and like when they do have these moments it's it's really nice and it's sweet and it's just like yeah fuck it like i get it like <laughs> yeah. mm. and and then we have the happy ending after that which is like uh, which was expected which was pretty much like oh yeah the uh, robbie and and the character are going to end up together and that's exactly what happened in the end and to me it was like okay it was finally, it was interesting how it came out, the the, the final moment, and mm -hmm. like, there were some jokes in there, because like, he's a mechanic, so like, you know, he working good with his hands, you know, like, that was like, okay, that's a silly joke, but like, I, I get it. Um, but it was very interesting how that relationship came to be, but, and then she escaping from like the ruler area, which I can identify with, because like, I came from Puerto Rico, and uh, pretty much I was escaping, so I can understand that you wanted to escape like a small place or a place where you don't feel like you fit uh, well. So yeah. that was the, the, that was just like, okay, yeah, I, get, I get that, you know? Yeah, um, right. Yeah, it was kind of like the, the classic Cinderella story, like, oh, yeah, and they live happily ever after. I mean, I, I don't know. But, I mean, I, th I think it was pretty preordained that she and Bobby are going to get together. Yeah, yeah, and and I think that it's fine, and whatever it is, it's I don't know. I I walked away from the film just being like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> um, and it doesn't shame. make you feel bad that uh, don't no. feel bad about no. it, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's nothing like, you're a boy, so I won't ever touch, you were a boy, so I can't ever, it's, it's like, I'm like, it's just, a, it's just a little cringy at times. Yeah. And it's representative, yeah. and it's unfortunately representative of its time. But, um, well, yeah, there's, there's a lot of heart. It's a lot of hot. It's got a lot of hot, kid. <laughs> got a lot of hot. Yep. <laughs> from, from so... my... Shall we go, so we, shall we go into judgment now? Shall we, yeah. Shall, shall, yeah shall, it, shall, it's about shall, shall we cast up. the mallet down? You we're, know? Gonna, we're casting the mallet down on this. Uh, so at the end of the podcast, we always ask two questions. Uh, was it transphobic and was it enjoyable? Because very often it can be both. <laughs> so <laughs> let's start. Uh, I'm going to start with the, the more obvious question. I, I'm, neither of them were terribly obvious in my opinion, but like the more obvious question to me, which is, was it enjoyable? I will say yes to an extent, but I feel like it was too. They could have done a better job with the storyline and the dialogue. The dialogue was like, like I said, it was like a uh, France 101 education for viewers, you know. Um, but other than that, I, I, I did enjoy it. Um, as for the times that I found myself hitting the, my, my little table here because of some of the. Um, some of the things were rough to watch. Was it enjoyable? Yes, I, I I found it enjoyable at times, and especially for me, just and especially when I go back to when I first watched it, and I was emerging and coming out at that time. To be able to see somebody who was trans being represented in such a way was for me just. It filled me with a lot of joy, even though parts of the film were weird. And 
it's well filmed. It's very beautiful. Parts of the script are wooden and clumsy. That can be expected with any short, with any independent film. Um, I don't hold, uh, I don't hold anybody against that. Mistakes are made. I'm currently editing a film right now, and I'm just like, I wrote a really good film, but it's really hard to edit film. Um, uh, mood, but, mood. Yeah. <laughs> so, if I think that, especially for any trans person who decides to watch this film, going into the film knowing that there's going to be some cringeworthy stuff that you might find to be either outdated or like straight up offensive. Like they use the R word at, at, at a point in time, which really upset me when I watched it. Cause I was like, why, why would anybody do this in 2014 and, um, or 2015 or whatever it is I watched it. But, and I, I was pretty upset about that in particular, but, um, and not to absolve the filmmaker of making that choice. But the fact of the matter is, is that it's a really real character. And for me, I, yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed watching it and I'll probably watch it again at some point in the future. Yeah, I I tend to agree with all of that. Uh, honestly, there are so many points that are just so cringy, but at the same time, it's not necessarily, cringy doesn't necessarily equal bad. Uh, it's just mm -hmm. kind of like, Okay, this is intriguing. Uh, for me, I absolutely loved it. I think that it was it was great. Uh, even beyond all of that, even beyond all of the what I like, I'm saying sledgehammer moments. Uh, but there were so many parts that surprised me, and because right. of that, I really walked away happy. And my wife again, like, put down the book she was reading to watch this with me, uh, because she became enveloped in it and just like. Huh, what is this? Um, which I don't think would have happened for Dallas Buyers Club, to be perfectly frank. <laughs> not, no. not that we're comparing these two specifically. But yeah, so for me, very enjoyable. Highly recommend. Uh, will not be for everyone, but you'll know if it's for you pretty quickly. Um, cool. So is it transphobic? No, except for, for, for a few of the characters that are transphobic, but it makes sense that the characters are transphobic because they're trying to tell the story and, and put that into perspective. But I don't feel like the movie is transphobic per se, you know? And, and I'm concerned that it has a trans character, which is one of the things that we're arguing to this day when it comes to Hollywood casting movies, like in the lead, this movie is it's not transphobic. I think this is one of the few movies that... I, it should have a special place in terms of like queer trans movie history because this was the first movie that I remember seeing that has a trans act actor on the lead and on the main character. That was that that was quite fantastic to see. Other than because like like you said, the movie that you mentioned, Dallas Boyers Club, like that, that they didn't have a trans character, a trans actor in there. They had somebody else and playing the Friends character a part. Freaking Oscar. Yep. Uh, yep. Sorry, uh, 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 I've vented about Dallas yeah. Fires Club enough today. <laughs> uh, I was just, like I said, I'm just happy that it had a, a trans act, a actor in the lead, similar to A Fantastic Woman, which is a movie that I, I would throw in there that I would recommend because those movies, like, do what. Uh, when you watch both movies, like you, you, you kind of can tell Hollywood. Listen, Hollywood, stop your bullshit that you cannot find trans actor because that is just bullshit. So, I, but when it comes to movie not being uh, being transphobic or not, it's not transphobic. It's a, it's it's actually one of this one of the better movies out there. I'm gonna agree, and I'm gonna say that the movie is not transphobic. It has elements of it that are. I don't know, trans weird. Uh, <laughs> I like that description. <laughs> that is a good like, description. <laughs> trans weird. Uh, and I don't think that's the fault of, of anyone involved in the production. I think that they portrayed a story that was exceptionally hard, probably hard to tell in, in 2014 as a passion project which got recognition for what it was, launched a trans woman's career, and and didn't, like you were saying before, it's it, it didn't fall into a lot of the tropes of, of trans people, uh, Paola. And it, it, not overly femme, you know, not overly, you know, man crazy, you know, <laughs> all of the other stuff. It was just, 
a regular person trying to live her life. And ultimately, and that's something Laverne Cox has talked about in, in when she talks about representation, is, is we need to see representation of regular trans people living their regular life. You know, mm -hmm. the trans woman who's working at Waffle House. You know, this person in the movie who's working at a coffee shop. And, the, the, and the, tr the trans woman who works in a factory shop, uh, manufacturing things, or the trans woman that is an auto mechanic, you know, like. That's, right. Yeah. Well, and those are the stories that we, that we need to hear. It's like, she's yeah. not some glamor queen, even though she's doing a fashion blog. And the most, the, you know, and it's a shame that there are those cringeworthy moments that we talked about that are trans weird i'm making air quotes <laughs> but but uh yeah i i believe that if a person goes into this movie especially if a trans person goes into this movie with the knowledge that we've laid down and watches it i think they'll find a very enjoyable film that can actually give give people hope in to mm -hmm. a certain extent because ultimately that's what i want at, when i'm watching a film about trans representation i either want to see an extraordinarily real story that doesn't pull any punches or i want to say i mean this is a rom-com yeah. you know what do people expect it's but it's a rom-com about a trans woman that only has a handful of cringeworthy moments that's fantastic yeah it's not transphobic <laughs> <sighs> I I highly agree. I think that the I need to I need to state because we have gotten not pushback in the past, but we have gotten reviews in the past that have said like, oh, there are transphobia in this, and therefore it's transphobic. I will say like, if that is your feeling, that then your way is still your way, and respect to your way. At the same time, uh, no, I feel like pieces can have transphobia in them and still not be transphobic. I feel like this is one of those, uh, the transphobic moments that do exist in there that happen, uh, that are enacted by a character are very harsh. So be ready for that going in. But again, much like I'm talking about with this sensitivity of a sledgehammer on all accounts, uh, it really, it does a job very well to create exactly like what was already said, a really well-rounded, active character who is trying to achieve her dreams and who is just trying to live her life uh and yeah you don't often get that with trans characters you don't often get that with a lot of characters but to to see mm -hmm. it work and see it mm -hmm. thrive in this and to see the amount of support even though we also see the amount of flack she gets but the sheer amount of support that she still gets is just really yep. affirming so fuck yeah. it, I say no, this is not transphobic. <laughs> not transphobic, yay. Woo! We did it, y'all. <laughs> two <Cool>. fists up. <laughs> <laughs> well, two fingers, that's about the two same Two fingers thing. up. Oh, no. <laughs> wait, no, no. Yeah. Two well, well-groomed fingers up. Okay. <laughs> cool. so, oh, golly. So tell people how to find you on the internet if you want them to. <laughs> Oh, sure. Um, people can find me at, um, I'm on all of the socials and on Patreon, and you can just search for my name. It's spelled M-Y-A-B-Y-R-N-E. Again, M-Y-A-B-Y-R-N-E. Um, it's either Mia Burn Music or just Mia Burn on IG, on Facebook, on tw uh, Twitter, whatever. I don't go on Twitter very much because Turks just want to mess with me. Um, I also write for Country Queer Magazine. And uh, I'm a I'm a full time musician, and but I am very much trying to push my Patreon because it helps pay my rent. So that's Patreon.com/slash Beaverburn Music. Um, I hope you can go and follow me there or on my YouTube. Yeah, and I I will throw out Mia is a fantastic fucking musician. I really love listening to Mia's work. So thank you. Uh, yeah, Paula. Um, on social media, I'm on Twitter, um, PJ Gonzalez thirty nine. Uh, Instagram, PJ Gonzalez 42, and on you type PJ the Whip Gonzalez, which is my wrestling name because I I, I I do wrestling. Um, you can find me. Yes. Oh yeah. Uh, no, Paula. Paula's a fucking. Oh, badass. you didn't know me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I I do wrestling. Yeah. Um, That's so cool. Um, <laughs> but I also I, I also be involved in theater and other ven ventures and and even now I'm like I'm training to be 
uh, practicing vent ventriloquism skills. Let's go figure why. Yeah. Uh, anyway, but yeah, uh, social media, Facebook, uh, PJ the Web Gonzalez, uh, going to get you to my webpage. Or if you, anybody that go online, PJ Gonzalez, and I get you to my to my uh, website. Is that Gonzalez with a Z or an S? Gonzalez with a Z, yeah. Gonzalez okay. with Bozy. Gonzalez, two Z. Okay. Yeah. Some people put out one Z and then an S, and I hate that. It's like, <laughs> no, that's not how you spell my name. <laughs> yeah, and for me, you can find me on Twitter at Lucretia Deerfor, L-U-C-R-E-T-I-A-D-E-A-R, and then the number four. Is it transphobic also has a Twitter at Is It Transphobic? We finally have an Instagram because I broke down and made an Instagram. So that's at Is It Transphobic? Uh, and then finally, I also have a Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash is it transphobic for at least $1 a month. You can definitely do more, but for at least $1 a month, you'll get access to our episodes one week early. We're also doing a series of interviews with folks who are either trans non-binary or who are cis and are just doing really amazing work with uh, gender and questioning gender uh, that we're going to be releasing to you one month early, and then we will release it to the general public a month later. So thank you all so much for listening. Mia, Paula, thank you so much for being on the podcast. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Yay! Is It Transphobic was produced, edited, and coordinated by Ashley Lauren Rogers. The original music you heard was all created by Vivian Aladrin, who you can find on Bandcamp at vivianaladrin.bandcamp.com. 